Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. Uh, you might actually see that intro than another intro because we are having to record this part just at the beginning. We are, it's been snow all in Nashville, kind of everywhere. So we couldn't record this week. So we have an episode that we held back. Uh, you guys will, you, we've been excited for you guys to see this one. Uh, but first, wanted to tell you about Talkspace. This pandemic has really changed everyone's mental health between maintaining personal relationships, working from home and staying healthy. It's all a lot to handle even under normal circumstances and also throw in this weather. It's insane. Right now, listeners get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. Match with a licensed therapist today at Talkspace.com or download the app. Use code Nate to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. Talkspace.com. Hello, folks. Welcome to Nate Land. We are here. I am Nate, Aaron Weber, Brian Bates. Uh, yeah, we're doing it. We're doing this is a uh, an episode that we're doing in case, you know, one of you guys kills over. I think we would just take one week off yeah. and then we'd get rolling again. Well, I assumed if one of us got it, you wouldn't even pause you just keep going if you got covid yeah oh if you got COVID, i mean we would just step out and you keep going i'll say if you killed over yeah even then uh yeah if you got COVID, yeah i don't i definitely don't need you is what is that what we're saying (laughs) that's what i'm asking (laughs) thanks huh it's like that line from the office dwight goes if i'm dead you guys have been dead for weeks (laughs) yeah 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 yeah. uh no yeah if one of y'all yeah if you got covid yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I'd notice, but <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, we were, we were recording this. I changed it. You know what I thought of? Like, I have a different hat. Everybody always talks about our hats. How long can we go? I still have a few hats I haven't worn that I think I could keep going. I had some repeats already. Yeah. I think this is a, probably a repeat. But. Yeah, I could, I could mix it up. I still have a few more left. Yeah. You, I'm, but I've started diving into hats I don't wear. Like, do you, you wear know? that hat around? Uh, I I don't. I actually don't mind this hat. I'd wear it to golf in. Uh, I just haven't. Yeah. But I would wear it. Mm-hmm. You know, I like it. Brian, what's your hat situation, man? I got a few. Yeah. I, I got some vintage like, ones. You ever worn one on the podcast? No. People how, have requested. How did uh, <laughs> practice go with the Titans this week? <laughs> like, you never wear <laughs> some... <laughs> This guy's, you look like a shrine, your closet. <laughs> but yours looks, ex- I mean, like, you know, the guy that they, he goes, uh, comes home and sits with his wife and they go, they let me on the field this week. <laughs> uh, and he goes, I think you've worn one of this exact same material. With that jacket. And she's like, oh, you like, you think you're going to coach or something? He goes, no, no, no. <laughs> but I got to be down there with the players. And I feel it was nice. They gave me this jacket because it was a little windy. Yeah. And uh, no, I'm joking. I would wear it. I could have got this from your closet. You could have. I don't have a Titans one, but I have. Uh, I wear a lot of sports stuff. Uh, I think it's you. You don't wear it, so it stands out more. It was a birthday gift. I set the tone. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still celebrating his birthday. Uh, <laughs> well, you don't throw it away the day after your birthday. <laughs> you can it's only like, wear it's it like on a birthday your card. Birthday. <laughs> it's a, how long is it? Two days max. <laughs> What's that? Ken Stanza, George. Yeah. Do, are you making that up? Making it up. <laughs> if you have a mantle, my whole life would be. I'd be a different person yeah. if I had a mantle. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, we're recording this one uh, just as a pre tape, just in case. Uh, and uh, so we're going to read. We got some just comments uh, that we, you know, that we sit and say these are the good ones. Not good, but they're no. the ones that. This is the B team. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, these, aren't, these aren't good. Yeah. Ah, if you get ready, if your comment gets read on this one, I mean, you need to, st- we're just saying yeah. you're, you're on the team, but you should step it up. Right. And if you still don't get read, you should just stop trying. <laughs> yeah. At this point. I, now these comments are good. They're just ones that are not timely. Yeah. That just not of, good enough for a real episode. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is a real episode, though. Are some of our best episodes, honestly? That's true. You could argue you'd rather be on one of these episodes. That is true. <laughs> yeah, because it's a, the ones that we put out regularly are, are not good. <laughs> uh, Luke Irwin, 
I'm a huge fan of this podcast, but on the flip side, I also enjoy it. <laughs> Starting off pretty good. A little humor. I like that. That's I like that. That was a good one. Luke, that's a good one. Yeah, these are comments that just can be that can fit in any time. That right. you know, it's not who knows what we just talked about. Yes. Because when this is going to come out. So these are these evergreen are, comments. Evergreen comments. So if you yeah, if you throw a comment out that you're like, I didn't get read, but it wasn't about something specifically, then maybe this is where you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. Steven Jack. It's a regular name, people, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Luke Irwin, Steven Jack. Watching Nate Land has made me realize it's better to be dumb and happy than it is to be smart and miserable. <laughs> and it's a shot at you, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> huh? You say that's like saying they'd rather be you than me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> That's funny. Emily Zell. An interesting life trend as I listen to the podcast. Thursdays, I'm way more prone to roasting people because I just listen to Bingley get roasted for two <laughs> hours. My friends can usually say, have you been listening to more Nate Land? Because I keep throwing out zingers. That's what it's about, Emily. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what like that time when people are like, oh, it feels mean. You're like, yeah, dude, we're comics. Like that's every right. like you said, every joke's mean. Rip it up, man. If you yeah. want to hang out comics, you just make fun of each other. Yep. That's the that's the point. Good for you, Emily. And you should be like, are you guys having fun today? And they're like, I mean, they're probably like, no. I mean, you keep <laughs> attacking my wardrobe. And she's like, well, don't wear that. <laughs> Boom. Joshua Tincher. Hello, folks. Nate, Aaron, and Bon Bonaparte. 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 That's a made up word. Like Napoleon. Napoleon Bonaparte. Oh, Bonaparte. Yeah. Napoleon Bonaparte? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that's his last name? Yeah. Napoleon, his last name is Bonaparte? Bonaparte. Bonaparte, they don't advertise that that much. <laughs> you don't hear about Napoleon's last name a lot. Do you? I've heard it. But I mean, everybody just talks about say, Napoleon. He's yeah. like Oprah. Like you just need the first name. Right. Napoleon. But Oprah Winfrey is. Right. I mean, they don't, you know. If you, if someone said, I want to talk about Napoleon Bonaparte, you're like, I don't know. I mean, do we even know that? Like, do I know him or something? Does he work with us? And they're like, no, Napoleon. You think more people know Oprah's last name than Napoleon's? World, yes. Worldwide? We're yep. talking worldwide? Yep. Yeah. I, now I, I do. I don't even think it's close, dude. Yeah. Oh, you think Napoleon's way better known? Yeah, I mean. That's, You're not even saying Napoleon. The name Napoleon is more known, but his last name is that's not. That's what I'm saying. That's like Hitler's first name. Everybody knows that. Adolf. Right. Yeah. That's the same thing. Uh. Hitler was 1945. I mean, he's it's recent. Yeah, Napoleon wasn't that far before that. Mm, no, um, 30s. Uh, <laughs> I've never heard. I don't know if I've ever thought about his last name or yeah. heard. I mean, it didn't make Bonaparte. <laughs> Napoleon Bonaparte. I think he was embarrassed of it. <laughs> I think Napoleon is such a great name. Then it's like Bonaparte. And you'd be like, what? Like, <laughs> We're going to listen to this guy? And then won't be taken as serious. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's clearly not being taken serious. We're using his last name as a joke. <laughs> it's Napoleon. Uh, not asking you to name names, but you think some comedians that started in the last few years will disappear now that Trump is leaving office, being that is their entire set. Like the comedian with his ponytail. <laughs> the ponytail. Uh, I do. I think, I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, that's going to be interesting all the way around. News. News will be very interesting to see, like, just. What are they going to do? Uh, I mean, I think media is going to get crushed. You go see all these like kind of open mic journalists that have gotten <laughs> like some credit over just like putting stuff out on Twitter and all this stuff. Like that's going to be gone. Like your whole system is built on hating a guy. And so, yeah, a lot of comedians when they, you know, they're going to make fun of whoever they're going to make fun of. I think they're still make fun of Trump. Yeah. I think they will. That's all they're going to be able to do. Uh, so yeah, they should be able to shift mm -hmm. and go, but yeah, you're going to see, you will see a drop off. I bet the good ones adapt to whatever. Right. I mean, yeah, the good ones, it doesn't matter right. what's going on. That's the point yeah. of being a comedian sure. is you should just be funny, but I'm saying, so yeah, there's a lot, you know, that we'll, we'll be interested to see. I mean that Sarah Cooper, what is she going to do? Her whole thing is doing Trump on TikTok, right? Yeah. Yeah. She probably wish she won. Netflix special. And then. So what's that's funny. She what? She probably wish he won. 
Yeah. It would have helped. Yeah. She would have been. It's. I mean, it's like getting a guaranteed four, job. Yeah, like four more country. years. Four more years would be perfect. Right. Yeah, but I mean, maybe she'll come up with something else. You know, she'll start just, doing Biden lip syncs. Yeah, she'll do lip syncs. I mean, look, she just does lip syncs. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just says words that people already say, <laughs> and uh, one of our best comedians. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine with it. I think it's great. You know. Yeah. Hop her out and get a Netflix special. <laughs> she went from nothing. Someone, I think she used to do comedy in New York. Oh, stand up? I think so. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> I mean, zero to Netflix special. Months. Yeah. Months. She started all that after the pandemic. Yeah. And then and shot the Netflix special. Yeah. America's Fastest Rising Comedian. Yeah. That's a title. Is it? No. Oh. <laughs> I think oh. that's Chad Ryden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like that's just what it's called. <laughs> you see <laughs> Nate's head just yeah. explode. <laughs> Jep. <laughs> Jep's back. Jep's been back. here. He has. Jeppe. <laughs> Jeppe. <laughs> this question is mainly for Aaron. Oh, okay. But do you consider comedy YouTubers as comedians? There's a channel called Funwas. Funhaus. Funhouse. Funhouse. <laughs> well, they spell house H A U S. That's true. That's true. Fun house. It might be Foon House. I don't Foon know. Foon Wah. Foon Wah. Foon Wah. <laughs> There's a channel called Fun House, which uses video games almost as a tool to make improv comedy. And one guy, James Williams, is especially good. He has done stand up in the past after his YouTube career started. Um, yeah. Aaron, what do you think? I'm not sure why that's for me. You know, it reminds me of that Fun House. You, mm. you know, there's a. There's an EDM artist, like a DJ named Dead Mouse. Yeah. But it's spelled Dead M A U 5. Yeah. And I remember in college trying to act like I knew. Yeah. And I go, man, I, go, I was talking to this guy. I go, man, I love Dead Mouse 5, dude. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, you have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Dead Mouse 5 is actually not a bad name either. That's way better yeah. than Dead Mouse, in yeah. my opinion. So that's Fun House, is what I'm guessing. So I'm not sure why this question's for me. Yeah, the guy at least doing comedy. But but go ahead, Aaron. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it. Comedy YouTubers as comedians. Uh, sure, as comedians, just stand up is something different. I think that's that's fair, right? I mean, it's a, uh, it's its own thing. That's my. I'm yes. I I think stand up. I would love uh, everything to be decla like <laughs> declassified, but like you separate us. We're stand-up comedians, and they can all be, yeah, everybody's a comedian. I'm a comedian. I'm funny. You know, whatever. Like, But that's not, I don't know. This guy started stand-up, too, after his you YouTube know him? started? I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, you know him? Yeah, uh, they do really, really good improvs. So. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> really, really good improvs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when they have to tell you what they're doing, I'd imagine. <laughs> Guys, here's what we're doing. It's improv comedy, and it's really good. <laughs> okay. This is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't seen it. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's funny. It's all videos. I mean, it's all like you get two seconds. Do you have a video? Or, no, I don't. They're uh, I can pull it pre-made videos with stand-up or, or, you know, I don't know. Stand-up is such a long thing to create, and it's you creating it. That's why I love the idea of stand-up. You create it. Mm -hmm. One person creates it, and they get up in front of people by themselves and have to tell these jokes, and these jokes have to work. And if they don't, you embarrass your family. <laughs> yeah, I mean, long. like, it's crazy how much bombing. So that's why I like stand-up, and that's what stand-up is to me. I do think a lot of people are getting lumped into the stand-up cruise. And I, honestly, they go tour because if they can sell tickets, they can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so that's what they, you know, you're seeing people that have these big followings, and they go stand-up. Which, if they do do that, if they go to stand-up, I would hope that they create a real show. That's all you want. If you're going to go be a YouTuber and you're like, I'm going to sell tickets. But I, mean, I don't know, dude. If you have your fans and they want to come see you, then good for you. Like, yeah. Do whatever you want. Yeah. It, that's, that's the only... Uh, uh, Funwa has 1.4... 1.6 million subscribers on YouTube. So they're pretty big. Yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see him do twenty minutes at the Stardome. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, go just chaos going on. Right. I mean, yeah, go to go do a show. No one knows. That's the thing. Doing a show where everyone knows you versus not is wildly different. 
when you perform and you're performing and no one knows who you are and they don't like you, the fact that you walk up there, especially you open for people and they're like, who is this? And yeah, yeah. All that. And you got to win these people over. There's nothing that's pretty special. And that's, that's almost like what the talent is that we go after at stand up is that that's what you're trying to create. Right. Versus with this, I mean, he's only going to, he'll never know what it's like to really perform in front of people that don't know him. It will only be his fans. I mean, I don't think he's going to go to open mics. I mean, I think you would, you, if you, you would see the difference of him. But I mean, look, maybe he's working on it and maybe he puts on a good show. I did a show Friday night uh, for a cowboy church in Alabama. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And it ended up going pretty well. But before. What's a cowboy church? It's just where people want to be cowboys and or are cowboys and they go to church. Is it called a cowboy church or you're calling it? No, they call it. It's this like one, a type of church. Yeah, right? there's a yeah. few of them. Yeah. I had a buddy that went to one. He said he used to just, he would chew tobacco in there. Yeah. So it's like you walk in, cowboy hat, mm-hmm. everything, and you're in church. Open bar. But everybody. Yeah, I'm just yeah. kidding. Everybody <laughs> is, uh, everybody's being cowboy. Yeah, cowboy hats. Right? Horses I mean, parked out you, front. I've never been there. You. Yeah. It wasn't held at the church, but the people at the event center were wearing cowboy hats. Not everybody, but mm-hmm. certainly most of them were. I mean, who's going to go to a cowboy church and then <laughs> not like, where's your hat? You're like, yeah. I'm not. I'm not wearing a hat. I'm not a cowboy. You're like, that's the main <laughs> thing. Yeah. Where did you think you were going? That's that's the word before church. Right. Should be church for cowboys. Church of cowboys. <laughs> church of cowboys. But instead, their state cowboys is more important to them than church. Right. <laughs> I thought it was going to go terrible. The setup looked terrible. Everything about it, I thought this is going to be terrible. And it went pretty well. But what do you, what would you – now everywhere you do shows, people probably know you. But but back when you were doing smaller corporate shows, I was thinking I would probably right now – I thought I was going to have to bomb for 45 minutes. I'd probably take 50% of commission just for it to be a good show if I had that option. Like what hmm. – yeah, They told you. So they walked up and they looked. 80 bucks, you can walk away right now. <laughs> oh, dude, I would that's love a, that. Yeah, that'd be almost everything no, I'm getting paid. He's implied, I mean, 160. That's how much he gets paid. <laughs> yeah. So you're telling me, they walked up to you and they said, 60 bucks, you can walk right now. And you're like, God, that's almost all my money. Uh, <laughs> you're not far off. Yeah. They're <laughs> but bombing hurts so bad and doing a great show feels so good that there's certainly a price we'd pay to just – take less money for it to be a good show i don't i don't know if there was ever for me because i do want to feel it i like you want to if a show's really bad you're like well i want to i want i want to sit in that and i want to feel it i think you learn from that yeah and you learn how to deal with that i mean i remember a long time ago me me and Giannis Papas were doing a show about to start his own podcast but, uh uh me and Giannis were doing a show and he and the show was it was just chaos it was outside and you're supposed to do like three minutes and it's bands and it's, you know, it's uh, f- almost like a festival type thing. No one's listening. I mean, when Giannis went up there, I would say most of the room doesn't know he's up there. Mm-hmm. Like that kind of thing. Like you're like, oh, people are talking, but everybody's drunk. And so they were like, we got hired to do it. And they 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 were like, all right, he can come off. And then they told me not to. They are like, don't even go up. It doesn't. None of this matters. But I remember I wanted to go up because I was like, well, I want to I want to feel it. Because you want to feel just that, what does it feel like to be talking to a room and no one's paying attention? Maybe for a short amount of time, 45 minutes. That was a short amount of time. Is a long well, 45 time minutes to sit you're in doing it. it. There you're doing it for the money. You're, you're, that's what you're getting paid for. That's your job. And so mm-hmm. you, you do need to learn how to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, to go up there and f- figure it out. You know, it's like mm-hmm. you should, every, every mindset as a comedian should go, I will make this work. So I don't think you would ever take it because you would go, well, I can, I don't need to take it. I'll, I'll, I'll make these people. I'm funny. These people will laugh. And it, I know you're in situations that are not good, but you don't you ever, don't you always think I can do it? Yeah. Until sometimes when I get there and see it in the flesh, the setup and everything and yeah. see the actual people and I'm like, oh man, I am about to bomb. Yeah. I've done some shows where I'd have been like, all right, take maybe for $20, just have everybody face me. Yeah. You know, just like yeah. the bare minimum. Like, yeah. I'll do another 10 to turn off the TVs. Yeah. And just get it to where it's act- an actual yeah, show. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. That's all you're trying to fight for is get it to like a show that people know right. it's happening. Right. Well, I got the pastor to get everybody to kind of move up to the front because yeah. there was a food truck running the you generator. Lasso them. 
<laughs> How much time did you do? 45. Wow. Was it, it was fun, you said? Yeah, it went much better than I expected. You just went up cold? There was a guy playing music beforehand. He yeah. was just playing cover songs, and nobody was listening. And mm-hmm. Everybody was just talking. But that's totally different, playing cover songs with someone else as opposed to you just bearing your soul on stage. <laughs> did they <laughs> nobody listening? Heard them together? Bearing. Like did they? Did a guy walk and heard them, and then kind of keep them? They don't even know they're getting moved to the stage. Is that how the Cowboys just start? They go, yeah. They just keep talking. Next thing you know, it's like, oh, there's a stage right here, and you're there. Maybe, maybe, yeah. Uh, so yes. Anyway, we are we love comedy YouTubers. Uh, <laughs> long story short, Mason Gudenson, the doppelganger episode was on the topic of multiple births, talking about triplets and twins. <laughs> I, I make a comma period. <laughs> That's a big problem. <laughs> That was a comma. <laughs> Doppelganger's episode was on the topic of multiple births, comma. And I just... <laughs> Doppelganger's episode was on the topic of multiple births. Talking about triplets and twins. <laughs> Not to brag, but my brothers and I are the first set of all male quintuplets to survive birth in the U.S. Wow. I believe I believe a Google image search of good and son quintuplets will pull up the picture of us on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno as well. Once again, huge fan and Nate is by far my favorite comedian. Sorry, Aaron and be- Belzebub. <laughs> Beelzebub. Belze- huh? Beelzebub. Beelzebub. Napoleon's niece. <laughs> uh, also, being born and raised in Montgomery makes hearing all of your stories about Alabama and Tennessee so much more relatable to keep up the good work. Good and son quintuplets. Look at that. Wow. It's from Montgomery, Alabama. Wow. There you are. They're, so they're 11 years old huh? in t- 2007. Is that where you're from? I'm from Basically, Montgomery, yeah. Yeah, at least someone made it on tonight's show from there. Uh, <laughs> you know them, Aaron? <laughs> oh, look at that. Here they are. That's pretty I mean, cool. Really, you know what's funny is they look familiar. Like, <laughs> That's the good son boys. Yeah, they do look familiar almost like. I love that this. out of all five of them, only one is a fan of them. It's like, <laughs> I can't get the other four on board. It's a lot. But I like it. But I like them. Look at that. How fun is that? It's got to be. Probably, probably got to be pretty fun as a kid to grow up with five kids, but then also the parents got to be a nightmare. Not a nightmare, but it's like just all hands on deck until yeah. these kids are yeah. grown. They're Must probably about your wild, age, right, Aaron? Man. Yeah. You don't remember this? Uh, so they were 11 in 2007, so they're five years younger than me. They're 24, 25. Doesn't ring a bell? No, I would have remembered five. Successful. Looks like Ed Sheeran. Right. <laughs> he does look a little bit like Ed Sheeran. Yeah. You know, and then this is them doing the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, so they know we love America. That's cool. They love us. Uh, we're taught we're taught to do it right in Montgomery. Yeah, you know what I mean. All right. Um, wow. Look at that. That's really interesting. I've, yeah. I've, I've, I I wonder. That's got to be just a wild life to have four. I don't even know what you call them. Brothers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> god darren i thought you were smart i mean he was we have started digging and it's i mean on the surface we thought it's all fake there's gonna be a lot of oil under this land and then we keep there's nothing oh boy it is falling apart piece by piece i mean i'm not what i meant i mean what do you call if you have twins you call them your twin you know what I mean? What do you call your quintuplet? Your quin. <laughs> He's my quin. He's my brother. I think you say brother or quin, or you say you probably say your twin. Well, they're not. What do you twins. say? Well, even they're for not twins. twins. That's what I'm saying. So you say brother, but we're quintuplets. What do you I say? I think for it's triplets? a little bit of a conversation. To be I, honest, I, I, I don't think, think it's a blow off. No, this is my twin. Let's keep going. Don't worry about <laughs> right. it. I think it's like. <laughs> You got brothers, you're like, all right, let me, I got to. Take a seat. Yeah, um, yeah, I got to dive into it a little bit. <laughs> Bobby Burns. Can Aaron or Bacon Bits please sum up the concept of peer review to Nate? Man, you throw a quotation at me, <laughs> I stop. That's what happens. Okay. You get any kind of, just put any kind of dot. I don't care what the dot is doing. <laughs> something if there's a dot line put it behind a word i'm stopping 
and I'm gathering myself, <laughs> and it, it really comes Did you off. Just describe quotation marks as dots. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying any anything. I'm not saying quotes. I know they're not dots. I'm just saying yeah, okay. you put you put a line, you put a dash, punctuation. Uh, okay. You put anything. <laughs> if there's going to be, we got to explain peer review. <laughs> if a people put sauce down accidentally behind a word, I'm probably stopping. Right. Hey, Bobby Burns, we're going to back up. We got to explain quotation marks first, yeah, and yeah. then we'll get to peer review. <laughs> there's Ooh. the concept of peer review. the The bad part is when it just says too Nate. So that that's the part that's hard. <laughs> like a comma that's early, I can maybe you don't notice. Yeah. But when I go peer review. Too Nate. Uh, that's when you're like, I was hoping the sentence was going to keep going. <laughs> Every time he talks about scientists not having consequences for saying wild stuff, I have to shake my head. Let's agree that the internet has given absolute morons a voice to say whatever they want, but to get real research printed in a legitimate way takes an unbelievable, very Nate voice, amount of time and effort. Keep up the excellent work, fellas. I uh, look forward to every episode. So peer review. So he's saying that, like, to get it actually, but the, my what I would say to that is, what's your real thing? Is it the news? Is it regular TV news? I mean, can we, you know, like that should be powerful, right? But there's, I don't trust everybody in those TV news, yeah. internet. You're seeing people with blue check marks that say they're this thing. I don't trust all of them. So, it, I, what I would say to that is, I don't know what to read, what to read that doesn't have some kind of like bias to it mm -hmm. there's so much stuff that has bias to it that's the thing that i question even like scientific journals scientific stuff journal stuff all has bias when they were you know not to get in the whole thing but like the outside to be like the protests are fine but you can't go inside and they say well that's more important i'm not trying to get all political but I, like that doesn't right it, a person that wants to stay out of it would just be like so we can all go outside and like hang out and they're like no nah, you can't all go out and hang out but you can if you're Doing this other thing, you can't. So that what would that what would that guy say? That is there? Give me one place to go look. That's all I want. Yeah, I was just gonna say that Bobby Burns is gonna hate the episode we just recorded. <laughs> the last no, episode. I argue. Yeah, I mean we trashed scientific research for about twenty minutes. <laughs> a long time. time. Yeah, but we. But I. That's what I would want to know, Bobby. Send me what I should look. I at. mean, is Bobby Burns a scientist? I'm wondering why he's so worked up about this. Yeah, uh, I don't know. That I either. mean, he could just be making a point. I mean, look, I, look. If he's right, I all I want is like, look. I try to find out. Like, uh, you ever look up like some of the news? I would look up. I want to find the most unbiased news. Yeah, it's pretty tough to find where you can't find some news that's like, here's a dude that's just this is the facts and like go from it. You know, I know some people say AP news, but I think AP like everything is kind of messed up right now. Yeah. No, I have a, you know, my friend Krista, who's a scientist mm -hmm. and when they do research on a particular subject in their field, then before they can release it, um, as a paper, they have to have other peers that are similar in their field from other places, review it and do the research to see if what they came up with makes sense mm -hmm. to keep somebody from just saying, mm -hmm. Oh, I discovered something ridiculous in the smallest Christmas card. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. And then it gets, once it's reviewed and and verified, then it gets released in some type of scientific journal. And yeah. then that's usually when the news then maybe reports that story. Yeah. But does somebody outside of the scientific community come in, like a third party come in and go, all right, let's take a, let's take a look that, at what all y'all are doing. Yeah. Except it'd be so hard to, for them to even. That's awfully convenient. <laughs> yeah. You know? I mean, it's. You guys wouldn't understand. But like scientists Dude. disagree. They, they do. Like, so there's they not do. like, there's never somebody yeah. that goes, no, that's a hundred percent not. So they go, I mean, I'm sure scientists get, even if peer, peer reviews. So you're like, well, it can only get posted if it gets a peer review. Well, I could go send it to the correct peer reviews that I want to send it to. Yeah. So if I wanted to get something approved, I could be like, well, I'm going to choose. I don't think they can. Oh, they can. I think someone else. So there's like an to keep them from doing an that. official yeah. process. I think is, so. Yeah. yeah, and sometimes they do get shot down. Sometimes people do say this doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up, and they expose them. Yeah, for that. And that's the stuff you want to read. Yeah, you know, that that's is the, the stuff, stuff you really. That's want the to stuff. Get yeah, I want to get into. They're now. like, look, the people are not ready for this. Yeah. Now yeah. there is an example on today's show that uh, some guy just released some findings. I don't know if it's a guy, but a group, and it said expect a it be coming out soon in a journal. So in that case, seems like maybe they got it yeah. out there before it was out there. Yeah, I did not know. 
I never thought about peer review. So Bobby, that I would agree with that. Uh, and I maybe I, I just don't know where to look and see. Yeah. And it is you're getting people don't understand the power and the powerfulness of the internet and like Twitter and all this stuff. And then people, because people even when they quote like a science thing and they're like basically what the scientist is saying is, and then you're just reading that what well, basically mm -hmm. what he's saying. And now that guy's opinion is mixed in with whatever that scientist is saying. But I just don't trust a lot. I'm I'm a very and I, I have started becoming, I just don't trust, I don't know. I get nervous. I don't trust stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know where stuff's coming from. Bigfoot uh, shows you trust. I trusted that guy. Yeah. Yeah. I believe a lot of stuff. Yeah. I believe it. You know, I think it's fun when it's not. Yeah. Those are our peers. Yeah. Those kind of guys. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I know everybody's like, I do about show about Bigfoot. It's not harming anybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm talking about it gets into like serious stuff. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, Aristotle, nonsense. Aristotle said the mark of an educated person is being able to entertain a thought without accepting it. Yeah. I think mm. that's a big comic trick. Oh, boy. It's like, yeah. let's go down this rabbit hole. I'm not going to fully commit to this, but yeah. let's have fun exploring it. You know? Ted Lasso, which I finished last <laughs> night. Ted Lasso. <laughs> he quotes Aristotle. You got him a Ted Lasso. <laughs> Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> point yeah. counterpoint yeah <laughs> uh he said uh well, i don't even remember what he said now something about being curious <laughs> he said you never be something you always be curious <laughs> he said just do it the great uh, the great mind yeah <laughs> two great philosophers <laughs> <laughs> If no one, I, everybody, if they haven't, go finish Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso is unreal, dude. You I finished, finished it last night. The yeah. best. The best show. It's better than whatever Aeropostle did. <laughs> Aeropostle. The Aeropostle Network. Uh, <laughs> Aaron's Poster Parents. <laughs> that's, an air, that's a fun one to go with. Ooh. I think we answered Bobby's question. <laughs> the follow up. Once I quoted Ted Lasso, I think Bobby. I think we know where we're at, right, buddy? Bobby's already turned it off. Yeah, no, Bobby's like, I think. I think me and Bobby, we get where each other is at. You know right. what I mean? Bobby's like, my mistake. Yeah, he goes. Oh, right. you an apology? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I would. I want a Bobby Burns in my life. That's what I like. I like to have a, a Bobby Burns that I just can go. Hey, is this crazy? <laughs> That's what I like. You need a Bobby oh, Burns. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go read science journals. That's crazy. Just a guy to run it by. I just want a guy that I would trust. Like a Bo I would want to be like, hey, Bobby, almost how like much a, you trust this? Like a peer review almost. I, I like a peer review of the peer review. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like. Yeah. Dustin Boger or Boger, B-O-G-E-R, Dustin Boger. Thank you, folks. Because of your fast food episode, my family and I were able to avoid a long wait McDonald's drive through line. While waiting, I checked McBroken.com, and it was showing the ice cream machine was not working. I called the McDonald's to confirm this, and the employee told me that it, it had been down all day. They've been having some big problems. <laughs> McBroken.com. Such a good idea. Yeah. If anybody doesn't yeah. remember when this came out, it tells you when the ice cream machines are broken. And I mean, unbelievable, yeah. dude. That's so good. A lot of people talk about wanting to help the world. <laughs> and that guy did it, man. I know. That guy is, that's a legit. It's rare to see somebody just step up and like, yeah. oh, I'll get Everybody it. Everybody talks about real serious stuff. And you're like, that guy's, your time mm -hmm. is not being just wasted. He yeah. should be Time's person of the year. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember, uh, there used to be the show before Shark Tank, but it was the exact same kind of show where you pitch your inventions. Yeah, maybe it was Shark Tank. There was There's some one show. about inventions that I remember that I think about. That I th this was might have been about inventions, yeah. and a guy invented a device that removes all bathroom smell. And he brought it, and and the the panelists were like, "This is not even a, like a real big problem, so we're not even gonna." Yeah. And there was one panelist that was like, "I commend you. I think you're doing the Lord's work. Yeah. These people don't get it." I always think about that. Yeah. The guy's solving a real pro a real yeah. world problem. Yeah. You know, and you're not always going to get the love for that. So uh I think about one invention because of that show 
the umbrella that opens like upside down. So when you go out, when you like, if it's raining and your door cracks, you can put your umbrella up and it opens inside out. So it goes up and out. So oh. instead of having, you know, you can never open your umbrella. If it was pouring down rain, you have to open your, you have to put your hand above the car and then open the umbrella. Mm -hmm. This one, you could just put it right outside the crack of the door and it opens inside out. Wow. And I remember seeing that on there and I was like, I mean, blown away. Uh-huh. This guy could be solving cancer for, I mean, just, yeah. you're like, what is this kind of mind even, how do we even walk around with a guy like that? <laughs> yeah. And he didn't win. Like a, a car seat thing won for safety car seat. But that is the same show. Yeah. So the car seat that's like in a revolving yeah. circle. That yeah. Would, yeah. Which is, which is yeah. uh, you know. I mean, I don't see those around, so nothing came yeah. of it. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if they're around either. But I have one of those umbrellas. Do you really? Yeah. A Vandy one. And they work? Mm-hmm. It opens up. That, I thought it was such a good idea. Yeah, good for that guy. I always think of the dryers, too, that you dry with your hand, mm -hmm. you know, the air dry. I saw that on 60 Minutes. The guy made vacuums, and then he made that. Those and are it, Dyson, right? Dyson. The, yeah. <laughs> and every time I see it, I remember seeing it on 60 Minutes, and I go, look at that guy. Yeah. I'm happy for him. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go in the bathroom, saw one yesterday, I go, okay. okay. He was doing all right before that. I, I know, mean, but I just, he, I, I just saw it from that. He was like, yeah. then we started making this. They're going to be everywhere. And I didn't see People them everywhere. People called them dumb. You know? Yep. And then they weren't everywhere. Then they got into every bathroom. And now when you go to the bathroom, you see them, you're like, this guy got it everywhere. Yeah. And you're just like, you can almost see the success. Yeah. And so you're like, good for him, man. Good for him. Good for Dyson. Yeah. You know, that couple in Florida that took us out on the uh, – Wild Florida Safari. Yep, Wild Florida. She Wild Florida. said she went on um, uh, Shark Tank. She was telling us, and she and her sisters have a business where they created uh, swimsuits for pregnant women. Yeah. And I think they went on there and got some funding. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Do you remember that? I guess. Uh, I don't know. What do they look like? I remember going to Wild Florida. I mean, it's yeah, my yeah. alligators. From. Yeah. I mean, I guess just if you want to go to the beach and you're a pregnant woman, there's nothing you can wear that, I don't know what they look like, but oh. they invented a swimsuit. And then there was a kid that, Invented all the soap in hotels. You use a soap bar soap. Yeah. Came up with a system to collect it all and recycle it. So you're not just throwing away almost an entire bar of soap. He's just pushing them together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's my system. He goes, oh, what do you do? He goes, well, <laughs> I, you take a shower and you put it on top of the other soap. <laughs> and then, you know, it keeps falling off a lot and eventually it merges in. Or it gets small enough that you just kick it down the drain. <laughs> and you're like, oh. So it's like a long game. He goes, it's a long game. Yeah, it thing. takes a while. It takes a while. <laughs> we have a bar of soap sitting on top of our other bar right now. <laughs> Saw it this morning. And you always just go, I don't want to use it. Because it's just not going to, it doesn't stay on. Yeah. I thought about that. How do you make it? That's what the invention should be. How do you get it? How do you get the soap? The other soap, how do they connect them? You, know <laughs> you I mean? got to put it all inside of, in type of some type of netting. Mm -hmm. and put it all put it all in there and then use the netting but that's like a, and then the netting is like a built in scrubber soap. almost well that's with like no I'm thinking of like a bar of soap yeah you put it in a, put it in some netting and then you can just use that <clears throat> uh, so if anybody wants to be a millionaire yeah. you get, get to work on that get to work Trey Eubanks I know but that's the the uh, what's the thing called sponge the spongy things that they pour the liquid L soap loofah loofah that's basically what a loofah is. Yeah, but you can do it with hard soap. I know, but they, but they, they'd be like, well, just use the loofah. If you're going to use the scrubby thing, then you are you might as well just use a loofah and get rid of the hard soap completely. I mean, And just to use liquid soap. I mean, soap, listen, it's not, soap. you're going to have to make choices. You're saying and, if, you're, if, you're, if you're like, I'm never going to get rid of hard soap, which if a guy, which it could be me, I, don't, I use hard soap. I don't like loofahs. But so if someone like me shows up and I'm like, I don't want, I'm a hard soap guy. You show up where? What huh? Do do? The soap <laughs> you convention. Show up. And so the go, shower convention. Shower convention. And I go, I'm a hard soap guy. I'm not a loofah person. And you go, all right, but I'm tired of my soap sitting. It gets small, and I can't keep it on top of the other one. I try to put it at the bottom. Sometimes it angles correctly. Sometimes it doesn't. It's a little crooked. I go sideways. <laughs> I do a lot of things. I smash it. It yeah. seems like it works for about a day, and then it never. Yeah. Eventually, it'll get worn down enough. Yeah. So, what do I do? And you go, well, what if you put it in like in a loofah in a plastic bag? But I don't want a, lo a loofah because I would just do the liquid soap if I was a loofah guy. 
I don't think there's a lot of guys that are hard soap and loofah people. Is what I'm saying. I think you'd be surprised at the overlap. That's, of hard that's soap what and loofah. I, that's what I think. That's crazy. They you used in a rag, a regular yeah. rag. You know what? I'll put a prototype together and we'll, a we'll study. We'll I used to think you were smart enough to be able to do something like I'll that. I'll get a peer reviewed is, study. Yeah, that <laughs> that's is, out the window. Huh? That's out the window. I don't think you're gonna. <laughs> Uh, I think I'd walk into you with a piece of the soap in your mouth. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Trey Eubanks. Hello, folks. Have y'all considered every few episodes of doing a poll and let fans pick the topic of the next podcast? Thank you for the Clean Comedy Podcast. Uh, yeah, I would do that. I'd be interested to see. We could do that. Yeah. Just do an open poll. <sighs> that could backfire. That's yeah, sure well, good. I mean, I, it's just very open ended, so I don't know what someone would want to hear about. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to be honest, we'd end up having to talk about all of them because we need topics. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if, if there was a way to somehow do that where we could say, like, people could pr- put in some suggestions, I would say if people want to email, you know, email nateland at nateborgatsy.com and throw some stuff out. And if you, th- if we ended up going, like, oh, that is great, that'd be great. Uh, and it can't just be most people's suggestions are see if Nate can say these words yeah. and then they'll just list some hard words and stuff it can't just <laughs> give us a topic that we're going to do yeah. a whole episode about yeah we haven't got to it yet we've been talking very about comments but this episode we're going to talk about UFOs which I'm very excited to talk about uh, you just want to give us something that we can ramble on and try to be funny about yeah. uh, but you know yeah so throw out some stuff that you're like you know fast food we talk about fast anything yeah. See, that'd be great, dude. They get some in the way. Yeah, we'll give you a shout out. Uh, I, uh, so yeah, John Brocata, two more of these. John Brocata, regarding Nate's story about a funeral, a good friend of mine who's a pianist. Did I say that right? Pianist? <laughs> <laughs> Getting further away. Pianist. <laughs> Piano player. I know, but how do you say it? I think it's pianist. Pianist. Yeah. So I said, well, why'd y'all laugh then? I mean, I think you know why we laughed. I know, but pianist, is, I said it correct. <laughs> I mean, pianist. it's... Listen, pianist. It's a- <laughs> I went to a penguin funeral and this pianist played. <laughs> Came over one penguin's playing the piano. I said, where did he learn, where'd he learn how to do that? <laughs> a good friend of mine who's a pianist was once asked to play the organ at a funeral home. She's not too familiar with the organ. <laughs> and when it came time to play, she accidentally hit the wrong button and the <laughs> organ auto played roll out the barrel <laughs> for, I mean, just for maybe a solid minute because she couldn't figure out how to stop it. The funeral home director was furious and said she, and said she never play there again. However, the family said not to worry about it at all. And that anyone who knew the deceased would know he would have loved it, especially the idea of it happening at his own funeral. Absolutely love the show, boys. It's getting me through some tough times. All right. Stay stay there. Stay strong, John. That's hilarious. Uh, that is very funny. You know, that is funny to think if someone's like plays the piano and they're like, I have an organ, you wouldn't be like, well, do you know what? Yeah. You know, you would think the general idea is there. The base, Yeah, the basics are the same, but there's a t- all these buttons that you, yeah. you never, you know, you don't know what's what. Yeah. Organ people are superior. That's just a totally different instrument. Superior. So, okay. But could Oregon people play piano? Sure. So they are superior. I mean, come on, well, dude. well, not not as, not as well as a piano player could, but but it's an analog instrument. An organ's going to be if it's like a, a like a you know an electric organ. There's all kinds of stuff. An organ player is superior. It's like is a pilot yeah. superior to a race car driver? I mean, but are the keys? That's not even the. Well, those are two different things. <laughs> that's exactly what I'm saying. A piano and organ are basically the same thing. That, well, it would be pi- a helicopter, maybe a helicopter driver to a pilot, maybe. No, I like. Pi- I think my analogy was pretty good. We'll those are that. one can't go in the air and one can, so they do two totally different things. A piano and organ, but the fundamentals none of are us the even same. Know that You're there's operating a, a vehicle. That's the fundamentals are the same. There's still a steering wheel thing. Everybody on earth can drive a steering wheel. So doesn't mean they can Everybody on earth can play a piano. I can't. You just hit the buttons. It's not hard. Well, I can do the it. The keys. Only. Are the keys the same? Or the buttons? Yeah, the, the keys are going to be the same. But there's usually, it's split up into two levels. So there's two levels. Mm. And then you have you have a, for your feet too, mm. you have a an octave on, mm. on, there, on your feet. So. There's a lot is, going on. Uh, yeah. This so, is about as interesting as watching your buddy play the piano. Uh, I. <laughs> Roll out the barrel. That's such a funny song. 
I don't know I don't what know song, song is that. Should I play it? I mean, yeah. you guys don't know this? No. No, I'm, it's, it's 1939, so I get why you. Uh, <laughs> I I figured Aaron would know it. Let's we'll get to the course. Well, I can't turn up the TV. Okay. Here. But yeah. It uh oh, yeah, it looks like it's fun. It's called Beer Barrel Polka. Okay. Well, so that'd be funny to just be at a funeral to hear that. Yeah. Do you really know this song? I, I don't know if that's the same one I know. I know Roll Out the Barrel. I think you guys would know it if you heard the chorus. Yeah. But. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> you guys know Roll Out the Barrel? <laughs> Nobody knows it. I mean. All right. <laughs> it's like Nobody? Elaine Laura? with the big band. <laughs> <laughs> You're just sitting there. <laughs> what was the song she knew? Yeah. Something uh, old we... man, po- like all your songs are just like <laughs> mailman man driving a Jones oh, Street, man. and that's your favorite song. Yeah. It's, it's always like real long. It's like, like a sentence. Moon River. Yeah, that's my it's not. It, well, it, they're even like worse. Than, you know, it's like uh, Friday night taking a cab to downtown. You're like, what's that song? You're like, that's my mom's wedding song. She listened to it. You're like, did she? What's what was that? How is that about that? Midnight time at the zoo. You're like, what? Is these are these are song names, dude. That doesn't even make sense. Mm. That's all I would say. That's all the Andrew sisters. Yeah, that's the bands too. That's the most popular version of the song on YouTube. Okay. It's the Andrew sisters. And it's got one hundred and sixty-five thousand views. Yeah, so popular. <laughs> the Jones boys <laughs> playing their hits. Oh boy, turning around on a dead end. <laughs> to Jones of town. I don't know. I, next I, stop Pottersville. Next stop. Next stop Pottersville. That's that it, was yeah. it. Next stop Pot. Oh, that's an easy one. Mr. Pip. Mr. Yeah. Pitt. Uh, that is a pretty fun. I'm trying to think of any other because the, the songs back then are all crazy. They're just like a full on sentence. <laughs> a lot of Mario. Yeah. A lot, yeah. That you know to you know. What time is too late for the time zone? <laughs> <laughs> so you're like, <laughs> I, I mean, this point, I can't, I, I'm having big trouble. Uh, Glenn Rudolph, at this point, I think you guys are deliberately ignoring the alien topic. Y'all must know something, and the government wants to keep you silent. Well, Glenn, it's your lucky day because <laughs> we're going to talk about the government wanting to keep us silent. No, <laughs> we are going to talk about it. Uh, uh, let me show you, oh, I did like so. You had one more comment in here. Uh, as I'm sure you know, the PGA has what's in the bag for whoever wins the tournament each week. Since you're a big golfer, I'm curious as to what all is in your bag. Also, when uh, when you do golf with Benjamin Buford Blue, how many strokes do you give him, and he, is he allowed to drive the cart? I don't think he's driven the cart. Read that person's name. Tyler Williams. Tyler Williams. Uh, yeah, you haven't driven the cart, and then I wouldn't even, I couldn't even give you enough strokes, <laughs> to be honest. Not even to be mean. I don't think I could give you enough strokes. You give me like three a hole. I'd have to give you, I mean, probably a couple every, yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe 36 strokes. <laughs> yeah. You shoot, your two average a is like 100 and something, right? Mm-hmm. 105, not nothing crazy. I haven't broke 100, but on a on a, a hard course, it's gonna you're probably gonna shoot 105, 10, something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a course that's not as hard, you break you break 100 once, once, yeah, yeah. So I'm always in the 80s. So I mean, it's 20, yeah. But that's triple max. I mean, it's like you know. <laughs> but I like a triple max because I can't sit. But if you had to play straight up tournament golf. Yeah, I do like a what's in the bag, uh, but I, no one else. No, there's no one. No one cares. Tyler wants to know the main. I have PXGs in my bag. Uh, Taylor made driver, and uh, I use a fifty, fifty-four, and a sixty. There we go. That's golf talk right there. Mm-hmm. Think about changing it up to a fifty-eight. Make you the fifty-four and a fifty. Go fifty. Whew, that's bold. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people just someone just <laughs> nodded off and just hit the guardrail. Oh God, what are you doing? At the beginning of the pandemic, we all felt 
I mean, we all thought it'd be like a couple weeks, a month, you know, and this was all temporary. But now being in quarantine, I mean, it's been a year. It's been a year. It's really the new way of life, and it's incredibly challenging for everyone's mental health. Choose from suggested talking points about mental health, feeling overwhelmed by work, keeping in touch with loved ones, worried about not being completely stuck in terms of personal goals and what you want to accomplish. Talkspace lets you send and receive unlimited messages with your dedicated therapist in the Talkspace platform 24-7. With Talkspace, you set goals with your therapist and they hold you accountable and make sure you're really progressing. Therapy can really help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times. Uh, it's affordable. Talkspace is a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. Instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24-7 and they're engaged with you five days a week. Uh, I think Talkspace is an amazing thing. I know that this, all this stuff is driving everybody crazy. So make sure you talk to someone. Don't let yourself get just too far down a road. Talk to someone. And as a listener to this podcast, you're going to get $100 off your first month with Talkspace to match with a licensed therapist today. Go to Talkspace.com or just download the app. Make sure to use the code NATE to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. Uh, that's NATE and Talkspace.com. Uh, UFOs. So uh, something I've always wanted to talk about, and uh, I do love it. And then... So it's, you know, I mean, look, aliens, the alien thing is getting, it's, 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 it's batting around, you mm -hmm. know, like what, what we're talking about. It's serious. It's getting serious. I think me. if we had done this podcast five years ago, it'd be much different. It's just, it's become sort of, it's becoming, and you listeners might not even know this yet, but it's becoming a mainstream. People are talking about it. People it's, are talking about it on the news. It's I mean, no longer it. it's, crazy it's, people. By the time this comes out, we may have already found them. Right. Yeah. So read the 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 main thing that came out, the latest thing that we mentioned on the other podcast. The New York Times bit. article? Yeah. So um, New, York, review. <laughs> New York Times, well, they've actually broken a couple of stories. In 2017, they were the first one to break that story about the video we've seen of the Tic Tac UFO. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which was... Uh, Shot in like early two thousands, but it never just, thought it looked like a tic tac. That always seemed. I never, you know, it was like a weird thing to say. Yeah, and I guess it's like it looks like a little tic tac, and you're like, okay, does it look like a tic tac? I'll pull up the video. Yeah. So that was in 2017. They broke a story about that and had that video, which the government last year confirmed was real. And then back earlier this year, they did a story about a government a Pentagon program called Unidentified Aerial Phenomenal Task Force which was to collect things on uh, UFOs. And in that story, um, I mean, they quote people like Marco Rubio, who says, you know, we're just trying to figure out what's going on, things like that. The most interesting, probably, quote from the whole thing was, Eric Davis, an astrophysicist, works as a subcontractor and consultant for the Pentagon, said, in some cases, they found material that we couldn't make ourselves and is... Uh, as recently as this past March, he gave a briefing about retrievals from off-world vehicles not made on this Earth. That's the big comment. Well, the Israeli? No, this, is that the Israeli? Oh, no, no, no. That's, yeah. that, that, that's, that's the New York Times story. Now, the Israeli story came out just a couple of weeks ago. and that's, that's So he's saying he's – that guy said there is – they haven't seen the vehicles, right? Or this guy, Eric Davis, said they've seen. We, to me, yeah. it sounds like he says he did. Yeah, we have some that they weren't made here on Earth. He works for Aerospace Corporation, yeah. a defense contractor. Yeah. Uh, about retrieval of off world vehicles. Now, the Israeli guy, that didn't get a lot of traction because I guess people just think he's crazy. But this was a retired, I have to find it here, but he's a retired Israeli um, Air Force. See, guy. that's a, that's a, yeah. So this is when Bobby Burns is talking about science. Yeah. Like this guy, this is really guy sounds legit as far as title and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And everybody just says he's crazy. There's a great that great thing that uh Chappelle said, you're watch uh the uh here it is. Uh what's the inside the actor studio? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. talks about Martin Short. Right. He's like they they call you crazy. Like so they don't understand you, they just call you crazy. Yeah. And like so I think about that a lot. Like and it's in everything where you're like I'm not saying this is real again this is, he might be crazy and that's mm -hmm. the whole point of this but he might not be and with the titles and to go back with the peer review and the science like all this kind of stuff is you have all this where you're 
it's like they'd be like, well, "Don't be crazy, dude. That guy's crazy." And you're like, "We don't know if that guy's crazy. Uh-huh. I don't know who this guy. Is. I don't know what he does. I don't get it." No one's like, you know. So it's like, and if and when I think of that thing that Chappelle says, anytime I hear someone, I say everybody's crazy too. So, yeah. but <laughs> I'm not saying I'm above any of this. But when someone tells me something is crazy or someone's crazy, and unless I feel it or if I like this, I would like, like mm, I don't know. If, I'd like to see. I'd like mm-hmm. to see if he's crazy. But that's. Yeah. Very easy way to dismiss someone. He's crazy. It's a lunatic. Yeah. Don't even listen to him. I always think anytime I don't believe something, I always have to remind myself, somebody smarter than me disagrees with me on that, mm-hmm. on yeah. that topic. I mean, that's almost always the case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are smart people on the other side of every issue. So you might have your nose in the air and look down on people that believe in UFOs, but that dude, that dude right there is probably smarter than most people. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. He is a former head of Israel, Israel's defense ministry, Space Direction, I guess is what. And he says that we have agreement. This just came out a couple of weeks ago. We have agreements that have been signed between species, between um, aliens and the U.S. government. He's Israeli, but he says it's the U.S. government because I guess we're number one. And we have an underground base you in the depth of Mars. You, oh. <laughs> we have underground base in the depth of Mars where there's an American American astronauts and alien representatives. And he says President Trump was aware of the extraterrestrial existence and has been on the verge of revealing information, but was asked not to in order to prevent mass hysteria. I bet Trump negotiated a good deal. <laughs> I can't believe he hasn't uh, just let it out. Uh, Do you think there'd be <clears throat> mass hysteria? I mean, we've proven that... Uh, the stuff's out there and people don't care. It, they do care. It's again, like this is the other, it's, it's not out there. And if they wanted this to be the number one story that you hear about, think about every time that they complain about, or they say something about Trump, imagine that's a aliens, how much information that is. Yeah. So when you look at your phone and just news is popping up, right? Yeah. Think about COVID. So how, how scared we are of all these cases. And they keep just telling us more and more cases and more and more cases. If that was more and more like alien life form was just popping up and you're like 500, that like more, yeah. how much more scared of that? COVID is like, it's a disease. We have diseases. We can all wrap our head around diseases. If it's like aliens, you're mm-hmm. going to, you're going to, what are you going to do? You can't do anything. I mean, they can just land and I don't know, blow yeah. your home up. Like I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. I guess that's right because a, a does you know disease deadly and everything, but it's not going to disrupt. No one's logging. No one's grabbing a hold of these UFO stories because I. I mean, we're talking about this in a joking way, and I can't wrap my head around it. Like it being real. I want it. You know, you right. think like it's crazy, but yeah, you can't wrap your head around. Dude, what are they going to look like? What are they? Can they fly? As mm-hmm. can they just fly in the air? That's kind of crazy to think like. There's, if that, say if that guy is true, there's either nothing or there's something. Yeah. So it's either nothing and this is the world we know it and we live in this world and then, you know, it's a boring world that we've already done everything. I'm mm-hmm. not saying it's boring at all. But if there's aliens, that means the stuff you see in movies is people flying. Aliens are, they can fly. They have, they have aircrafts that don't, they, I said one of them has like when you say a water one, one go in the water and it can that tic tac one. Yeah, that's I didn't mention that. But I never caught on to that until I read the story this time. They said the first thing they saw when they went to investigate it was the water was swirling, and then they could see a shadow of it in the water. And then next thing you know, it was above it. Some people think UFOs are hiding underwater in our oceans. They they can go. What did I watch? Someone said it's like a hundred knots or something. Like it was faster than no I don't one. What a knot is? Huh? I don't know what. what What's you a knot? Know, I don't know either, but it seems like a lot. There's a hundred of them. It did sound yeah. pretty fast. Yeah. How much is a knot? Yeah, we'll, we'll do the research here. It's how hot is an oven? How hot is it? <laughs> uh, I feel like I used to know knots. You said it with confidence. Like, you can know a hundred knots. Yeah. Well, I think a hundred knots is a lot. A hundred knots is 115 miles per hour. So that's, <laughs> I mean. Underwater. Okay. Oh, underwater is different. Underwater. All right. So through I water. Said, I think my minivan could go 100 I, knots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how fast can the, f- f- say, submarine underwater? What's the uh, fastest thing that can go underwater? And they think they can well, go that, faster than this. That luxury hotel can go. <laughs> yeah, it goes up and down. Yeah. 
How far down are we now? Uh, uh, U.S. nuclear-powered submarines can go a little faster than 23 miles per hour or 20 knots. So it's five times faster than a nuclear submarine. By the way, so knots are basically the same as miles per <laughs> I mean, hour? They're, like, what a they're close joke. enough that you could, like... <laughs> What an absolute, <laughs> just trying to sound like you're yep. doing something different. <laughs> yep. So sh- driving a boat's like driving a car. You're like, I mean, mm-hmm. basically the same thing. Is that find an airplane? Yeah, it's probably the same. That's what Aaron says. Find an airplane, the same find a boat. You can't operate both the same. <laughs> now, my point was that the, the, the basic, the basics of them, the, the idea is the same. But they're just two different disciplines. If one stops, you plumb anyway, it out torpedo, of the air. Yeah, a torpedo, two hundred knots. If this, okay. if this so guy's right, and these aliens came from some star millions and billions and billions of miles away, I love that the fact we saw it. Right, we need a halfway point. How about Mars? Which <laughs> yeah. is, you know, that's what I bet Trump negotiate. We'll meet you, but we're not going past Mars. Yeah, that's hilarious. I mean, yeah, because yeah. you we can't. We haven't even got there yet. Maybe. Maybe that's the thing. We're like, look, we'll meet you, but we can't go past Mars. But they're like, that's not fair, dude. I'm going like 98% of the way. Yeah. And you're only going two. Yeah. And he's like, well, that's the deal. That's the deal. So well, I the think deal. they're moving so much quicker. I think you'd meet here. Yeah. He's saying they'd meet somewhere? He says we have an underground base on Mars where there's American astronauts and aliens that are working on stuff. That's the part that's hard to believe. <laughs> not that it's not all hard to believe, but so that's where I quit. There, so <clears throat> people are on Mars. This guy, by the way, that, that I got. If you, and just so you know, which episode we recorded it, if you listen to the Christmas episode, yeah, I got made fun of, but apparently, but I mentioned this on that episode. Yeah, people are on Mar- Mars. <laughs> I mentioned this, yeah. yeah, to defend you on that one. Um, yeah. so yeah, it's just funny that we'd go. <laughs> he come all the way. We're like, we'll meet you, but. We're not going past Mars. It's like the idea of, you know, and that's like Bigfoot. Like, you know, we talk about it and it's like, it's, you know, this guy believes in, I believe in everything in a sense, because it's fun. It, this is way more fun than just going, hey, y'all want to talk about how they don't exist? There's there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Right? So it's a lot funner to think this. Okay. We're seeing some kind of stuff. If they, if there's aliens, then maybe we are on Mars. That opens that door. That opens everything. Right. To be like, you don't know what we, I mean, what if we got one of their ships and they can go, we can get you there. Uh-huh. Who, I mean, I, you know, I don't know if they talk, you know, it's like, are they. Some people believe that the crash in Roswell, we collected technology mm-hmm. that's allow us to advance so much in the 20th century and 21st century because we've re-engineered it. We reverse yeah. engineered it. And that's how we've learned to do things from the microwave oven to other just stuff we use all the time. So mm-hmm. the Roswell thing. Is like the beginning of all that stuff? Well, the Roswell crash is the one where people said we collected their spaceships, yeah. their aliens, you know, if you believe that. And yeah. then they took it to Area 51, maybe. And, and then microwaves started after that? Yeah. So like a big technology jump started after Roswell? Well, the second half of the 20th century, a big technology yeah. jump. Computers, that phones, is crazy. stuff like that. Yeah. That's then, funny. That yeah, nuclear bomb. But there's like microwaves or that's microwaves. When was the microwave invented? 70s, After Roswell, seventies, right? Wow, I, don't I know. just remember in American Hustle they had in the movie microwaves that just come out. Yeah, and they called them science ovens because yeah. <laughs> they just couldn't wrap their head around yeah. these things. Are they could cook something in two minutes? Yeah, you know? it doesn't make sense. I don't it's understand crazy. it. Yeah, and you can immediately open it and put your hand in and be fine. I know. Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. <laughs> TiVo. Uh, <laughs> they had it on the spaceship. They had TiVo? Yeah, they caught a DVR, but yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, like it is funny that so all this could come down to Roswell. So we get their technology and then we just... So they handed it out to us, which is nice. Yeah. They well, I think they microphones. crashed by accident and then we just... No, I know, but the government... Oh. Like, oh, yeah, they shared the wealth. Like, it's not like the government's can eat hot pockets and we can't <laughs> right and we're like golly they won't give us any you know uh-huh. and he's like how'd you cook your dinner it took one minute why don't you all hand that stuff out man dude how, where would it be where, where where could we be if there was no roswell we'd just be on a horse <laughs> still i think we had i think we had cars before roswell <laughs> we have to go back to horses <laughs> i don't think cars would have worked Gonna go backwards. I think we were probably at a point where it's like, I don't know if this car thing's gonna take off. Yeah. (laughs) And then Roswell happened, microwaves, cars get a little faster. Right. 
Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. People just started. He, they go, are we going to be done with cars? And he goes, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But he goes, I mean, people are just starting to stop saying whoa. Yes. And we're going to have to go right back to horses <laughs> is what you're telling me. Is right when people are finally, whoa. <laughs> Can I ask a larger overarching question maybe, that maybe that people, <laughs> that people might be wondering? Okay. In general, what is the government's motivation to withhold this information? What is their motivation to, if they have evidence of aliens, to not share that with the American people? What do you think their motivations are for doing that? I think it's power. Is, okay. And uh, I think power is a gigantic. You got everybody at your control. If you, and I'm guessing, if you reveal something that crazy, everything we've ever known and been trained to know is over. If an alien popped down on CNN and it wasn't, I mean, it'd be like, is this real? Is it like, you know, you always have the Bigfoot tapes and uh -huh. it's enough that you don't believe it. If it is 100% proof, your government is pointless. Like what, I mean, you're, I mean, some would, but I mean, in head, you're like, it's all for everybody for themselves. Some would argue religion would be pointless. Yeah. You mean you are all every, everything. Well, uh, the government doesn't, do they have a motivation to keep religions no, together? They don't, I mean, they might have a motivation to do the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you don't think that if it well, like, like Independence to, Day, you don't think if aliens come that we're gonna we're gonna bond like together as a as, as a, a country, country as a country as a world as a world, as a world. Uh, yeah. yeah if they attacked us then yeah we could but I mean I think now it's like why would you I, I mean it is power in a sense but it is it's such a large thing for everybody to know that I'm not saying if I was not in the if I was ever president and you got told this information you might be like all right I get why you don't say it. Uh -huh. It's too much. Yeah. And if, if it happens, then it's complete chaos. Say if alien, there are aliens, then it is like, then all religion could be like, well, there's no religion then. Maybe people think there's absolutely now proof of religion. If, if you could believe that, you know, it's like anything's true. But if, if there's 100% proof of aliens, everything is, uh, everything's like kind of up in the air and everybody's belief systems for thousands of years yeah. are over. Yeah. Everybody, it's over. So if you're doing that, and then you're like a police officer is like going to give you a ticket, you're like, what? What does it even matter? This stupid. Right. I'm not taking your ticket. Yeah. There's aliens. I'm not taking your. What am I going to pay this? It's. It almost like I wonder if it would send back to, uh, like, would be back to old. Like you go back to horses. Back to horses. But you're back to just like fending for your own just self, yeah. honey. You're back into all this stuff because you're, you know, you're just ransack. Well, what's the point of money? What's the point of anything? If there's a, it's just like, would be just like, mm -hmm. you almost got to be fed it slowly. So then you can, can wrap your head around it. So Donald Trump Jr. did an interview with his dad for some Father's Day thing this year. And he asked him about, you're going to release anything on UFOs? And Trump said, I know some very interesting things about Roswell. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, I <can> <laughs> and, uh, and then he said, well, you're going to release it? He said, I'll have to think about that one. It's a wow. lot. It would be a lot. The government s says for Roswell that it was a uh, it was a balloon that they sent up to use to detect Soviet nuclear tests. And a book came out a few years ago. I saw this lady on the Daily Show. She says that Soviet leader Joseph Stalin had child child sized aviators, some who had deformities, and they made them look like aliens to try to crash in America to cause mass hysteria, much like the War of the Worlds. Hmm. Yeah, what about when those those aliens are attacking in the movie War of the Worlds? They're attacking us. Yes. So then it is mass hysteria. It's all for, you know, it's like the government is fighting them. I mean, I guess <clears throat> you'd want the government to fight. You'd want an army to fight them. But I think it would, I think it opens the door for, you know, are you going to go put in your credit card for gas <laughs> and be like, are you going to just get it? And like, I mean, you are, you know, you got to get your gas. Over. But like, are you going to go to the grocery store and wait in line for bread? You go yeah. just run out the door. Yeah. Are you going to go? I mean, there's no rules. You know what I mean? Like, so all the basic rules, yeah. like, you know, there's rules on the fact that you want the army to fight them and stuff like that. But you want the, like, the police is like, you can't, can't steal that. You're like, yeah, you should be fighting mm -hmm. the aliens. So you think mass hysteria and the world, the, 
starts crumbling kind of as far as the system. Yeah. I mean, the systems, it's all, it's all, uh, I mean, maybe the system would come back together, but at first it's a lot. Yeah. You don't think it's a lot? Oh yeah, I yeah. do. No, it's I do. a lot for sure. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, you know, we're not, you know, are we meeting next week talking podcasts and this week we're talking about <laughs> blankets. <laughs> <clears throat> and then we're like, hey, write, write that down. Honestly. Yeah, blankets is good. <laughs> good episode. Uh, we might do a blanket episode. The blanket episode, <laughs> right after aliens were revealed. <laughs> and then, I, I but I think you know, did, didn't Brian Regan have the joke about intelligent? It always says intelligent life. What if unintelligent? Right. Just <laughs> right. what's going on out oh, here? Like just a dumb alien comes yeah. barreling in. <laughs> Two plus two is chicken. chicken. Yeah, you're like, all right, all right. <clears throat> we have because it is. Why would they say the into any life would be? But I guess they're talking about parasites or yeah, like, like yeah. if you plant life or something. Yeah, I still uh, would, you'd want to be like, is there? There's not any plant life. But I'm saying if we found like through a telescope or research that there's plant life on another planet, that wouldn't be intelligent life, but it'd be life. Right. Yeah. But like I, any kind of animal would be intelligent life, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And animals are intelligent life? Yeah, anything that can think. Yeah. Yeah. Some ways. Yeah. Obviously, if they can make it to here, they're going to be probably pretty smart. Yeah, they're going to just obliterate us if they make it here. You yeah. think we're smarter than uh, another planet? I think we have more heart. I think we have more spirit. That's but, true, because I don't think they do. That's But that's the scary part. They operate on a different... Yeah, they're probably not even a carbon-based life form, dude. They've just downloaded their consciousness onto some sort of device. Some people you think know? they're us from the future. <laughs> what? <laughs> Aliens are? Yeah. So you're going to have you you come. You still got that jacket that's much more worn out. You got it. <laughs> they come back. They the have Titans are back at the oilers. You're like, they're not even there anymore, dude. Look at me. And it's just like it's a little bit grayer, <laughs> not as like you're still wearing. You go jacket. Still, Wait, got, I, still got the pin, Jerry. He says still got the jacket. Don't give any identifying characteristics about yourself, and I forget, and I wear this down there. <laughs> we got out a Titans jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was Eddie George. No, the so they're always described as having large. It looks like a space uniform. Like you know, they see like the Seinfeld you know, has that joke. Yeah, that the new the uniform went all in the what is it space <laughs> or V shaped V shaped yeah. one one piece with like the you boots. Wear it every, I would love it. I would love to have a uniform like that, like Dr. Dre. Yeah, just wear the same jacket every day. Zip, zip it up. Yeah. All right, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, they're described as having larger heads, which scientists say we're growing larger heads over a million of years because our brain's getting bigger. Right. Mm -hmm. They seem to, they say they communicate. This is what people have been abducted to say. They communicate with each other without making sounds. Mm -hmm. So like Elon Musk is talking about the Neuralink where the implant in your brain. So you mm -hmm. can just communicate without talking. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that think that it's just us from the future coming back to do some. Just mess with us. Yeah. Huh? Uh, but like us, like human beings. Yeah, not literally us. Three. Oh, I thought it meant like us. They thought the well, I'm sure land podcast. Are, well, it's like another, like it's another world. You know, like is there another? Is there alternate universe of there's a, there's a, there's a me on another world that's oh, right. doing the opposite of me? That's what I was thinking. But it's like humans coming from the future, coming back to look at the monkeys, what the would, dumb monkeys. What would the opposite of you be? <laughs> At the in this other planet, what Bizarro would, Nate. What, yeah, Bizarro what, what's Nate. Bizarro Nate doing right now? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's probably pretty smart, <laughs> right? So went to college. Not a problem getting in. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Improv maybe. Uh, <laughs> YouTube star. He's a YouTube. Yeah, he's a YouTuber. YouTube improv. improv star. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> Making way more money. Got two million subscribers on YouTube. <laughs> Just talking about breaking down pins, phones or whatever, electronic, like <laughs> unboxing, doing a lot of unboxing. Unboxing videos. Yeah. yeah. My alternate me still second base. <laughs> yeah. <they're good>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so UFOs really took off 
And like your alternate is who I think you're becoming that we're figuring out that you're not as smart as we think you are. I would have said an alternate would be a dumber version of you, but these past couple of podcasts, I'm like, your alternate actually might be the actual secret genius that we talk about. <laughs> I'm gonna step it up. <laughs> so there's all these government agencies that started in the ni- 1900s to investigate UFOs. Project Blue Book, you guys heard of that? Uh, a little bit. Kelly Blue Book. <laughs> yeah. I've the, never heard of it. It's there's shows about it. It's the most popular one. It was from the 50s to the 70s, but there was all these different ones. And they always come back with like every time somebody spots a UFO, and these are pilots. They're like, I chased this thing. One of them's guy chased it for 27 minutes. And they all have these incredibly detailed stories. And they always say, uh, they'll, they'll say it was a weather balloon, birds, sometimes it's birds. Sometimes a reflection. Sometimes they said you just saw Jupiter. Um, mm. Do you think anybody's ever had an encounter with a UFO and then they describe it that way and then they're like, you know what? I bet that was it. I bet it was. Probably. Just birds. Yeah. You think uh, there was? I, I don't think anybody's ever going to be like, I bet that was it. You're not right. Not birds. I, I could see a reflection for real. Like that's, And that'd be the most embarrassing. Why? Well, there was a to- pilot that uh, they said he, he was upside down and didn't realize. You know how sometimes they yeah. get turned around? And he was like, there's something, there's something, something coming after me. And he was barely, he was getting closer, but it was a reflection in the water. So it would get closer too. And they're like, I can't shake this thing. <laughs> it was just him. <laughs> and wait, was he going to, he almost died? Or he, he did was die. Fun? He did die? Yeah. Oh. But they think he, uh, they think he was seeing himself, his reflection in the water. Well, and so he was upside now, down dude. going gotta, down. He thought he was the, going up. You got to tell uh, me the guy dies before I laugh at yeah. what he did. Yeah. I told yeah, about a mass gets, murder goes, from Vol State, and yeah. he almost lost it. Well, that was hilarious. He goes, uh, yeah, that's but that's more. <laughs> you can grab, bring, wrap your head around something like that. You know? like, uh, that's that's more, yeah, that is funny to you. He's like, and then he was upset down because he was water, and you're like, yeah. He died. That's his, uh, <laughs> yeah. left two kids surviving. Uh, anyway, Aaron, go ahead. <laughs> he, he let Aaron really get it get going. Yeah. So this one guy. Not to- I could see a reflection, though, for sure. Yeah. Like you could just not, you have something that, you know, and then you're up there and it's the glare and you can see how that glare moves mm-hmm. and you're like, golly, that's, look at this thing. Yeah. This one guy spotted one in Washington state, got real t- chirpy about it. was telling everybody that would listen and he got, he says, does it say chirpy in the thing? No, that's me. Okay. But he's just telling a lot of people. This is the peer review <laughs> <some> <laughs> science <laughs> journal. <laughs> he said yeah. so bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he, this guy watched it saw one. He wouldn't shut up yeah. about it afterwards. Get, what is it? What do they say about being? Do they say chirpy or anything? Or no, you, well, I just I don't have the whole article here, but he was telling a lot of people about it. Okay. Got then it. a man in a dark suit shows up and warns him not to talk about it. Yeah. And that was, was the first case of Men in Black. But since then, it's been a lot of people claiming that they were visited by men in dark suits who threatened and warned them to not keep talking about the UFO. Uh, they say they're a secret government agency who's been given the task of suppressing evidence of UFOs. I would think that they would just not have to tell you to not talk about it. They can, you can be crazy. They, you're that person's crazy. And so it doesn't matter. Everybody can say there's UFOs right now and they, you're just a crazy person. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost more beneficial to them to just have a person who's seen as crazy openly talking about it. Yeah. Because then that discredits <clears throat> the whole oh, yeah. idea. Yeah, Don't they do that? Like plant people in misinformation? To- well, the oh, men probably. in black could be as easy as just going, yeah, we go do that a little bit. We have a man in black go do it. And that's actually this setup. Yeah. Is, you know, we have a man in black come do it. And then you that person goes, a man in black came and did this. Mm-hmm. And then they go, that you ask the government, they're like, "Are you insane?" Yeah. Once you see a movie, you yeah. see the movie, and yeah. there's a movie called Men in Black. We yeah. made a movie about it. Yeah. yeah. We we wouldn't send someone all in the same suits. We want you to know we're not coming. We wouldn't so. have sent Will Smith yeah. to come. Yeah. Tell you, you and know. you go, yeah, that's it's stupid, right? And they'd be that easy to. Mm-hmm. You go, yeah. I mean, do we? Do you believe that now? Do you believe it? You know, obviously, I probably believe in everything. So, do I believe that that particular story? Men, they're Men in Black or UFOs or aliens. I believe there are aliens, yeah. Yeah. Bigfoot, no. So if you believe in aliens, would you come down to Bigfoot? Would you go I'm not I'm not opposed to Bigfoot. Yeah. I'm open to the idea. Yeah. I think I'd be a little less surprised than the average person if it came out. Uh, I think that's where as I Bigfoot. fall. Yeah. Is that 
I think yeah. that's just somebody in that guy's family just being like, hey, can you stop, dude? Uh, the origin of Little Green Men uh, came from a case in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Uh, that they said these uh, people in the community of Kelly outside of Hopkinsville, five adults and seven children arrived at the Hopkinsville's po- Hopkinsville police station claiming that small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse. And they'd been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four hours. And they claimed they'd been shooting at 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into the window. But uh, they went and investigated and they think it's, most likely, it was great horn owls. Oh, uh, interesting. But didn't you? Uh, I feel like we, you and I talked about the story, Nate. Is this? Yeah, I think did I go to? I did. A, I shot a pilot. Yeah. At uh, for this show, that the idea of it was to host. We go to all these places and like cover this stuff. I don't. I, I remember my memory is so bad. And yeah. we went to Hopkinsville because there the eclipse was happening. And it was hap- and the best place to see it was there, in Hopkinsville. Yeah, in Hopkinsville. And so when the eclipse was coming, they had all this alien stuff about the. Uh, so they thought for sure that the eclipse was going to come back. And the, I mean, it's pretty crazy to think where this place was happening. It was like so many years, almost exactly after uh, after the this thing, whatever happened in Hopkinsville, and then the eclipse. The best place to see the eclipse in the world was Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so everybody was going to it. And then we went there and shot a pilot. Uh, I mean, went nowhere. The investigators say the people were probably drunk and they were fighting off owls. But it's mm-hmm. a very famous case. They're the first ones to yeah. say little green men. Most alien descriptions are gray. Yeah. Not, not green. Not no. green. So they say they're... Most say there are gray. Yeah. I got to stay here. Like 73% of American abductions say they're gray. What is it they say? What's an abduction? Like, so they say they go up and they think. Yeah. So the first case, the most famous case in America, Barney and Betty Hill, they were driving in New Hampshire. They were abducted in 1961. It was the most publicized report of alien abduction in the United States. Psychiatrists later suggested that. The abduction was hallucination brought on by stress of being an interracial couple in the early 1960s. Although both of them say we hadn't had any stress about it. Everybody's cool about it. Wow. Their granddaughter is a UFC fighter. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. What's her name? I think it's like Anita Hill or huh. something like that. That's Clarence Thomas accuser. But <laughs> yeah, I, think I, it's, I think it's something like that. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of Anita Hill. And maybe they but. did have stress about it. <laughs> uh, so they they say they were fully abducted and mm-hmm. where was that? Where the this thing? is in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And then how long were they gone? Or it says two days yeah. here. Um, and they don't remember. They remember it, or they, they had to be hypnotized. And then yeah. she had dreams about it. And they took them yeah. on the ship. And they, um, you know, did physical examinations yeah. and stuff like that. The first <laughs> reported case, though, this guy in Brazil, he's a farmer. He said that they came down and he tried to run on his tractor, but they stopped it. They were wearing gray coveralls and a helmet and they didn't speak. They made noises like barks or yelps. And then when he put him on the spaceship, he was stripped of his clothes. And then a very beautiful humanoid came into the room. She was very attractive and uh, she had small pointed chin and large blue cat like eyes. Hair on her head was long and white although her underarm hair was red and uh, they were forced to have sex together. (laughs) And then she rubbed her belly. She didn't kiss him. She nipped his chin. Then uh, she rubbed her belly and pointed up, which he says means she was going to raise their child in space. (laughs) His his wife claims to not have seen anything weird that night. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so she that's she, she boarded yeah. it up, and he goes, yeah. "Oh, you're gonna raise our kid in <laughs> yeah. space." Goes, Is that what uh, that means? He goes, "That makes sense." I mean, you're the mother, and uh, you know, I mean, that same laws down here. You know what I mean? Like just straight up, he's just level headed. I hope he's a level headed guy. And he goes, "Yeah, absolutely." Yeah, I get. It. Wouldn't even. I'd love. I mean, do you think I'd ever get a? You know, and he just points down. Yeah. Do you think I'll ever? And she goes, "I don't know. Maybe in the you know middle we can meet, but." uh he goes, but I just, he goes, it's just going to be so hard to just be, you know, 
it's just i don't know it's like it's not gonna be like your normal weekend every other weekend right <laughs> and he's like she's like oh, we don't even have weekends yeah you know yes. and he's like yeah i get it how long is that kid gonna live she's like thousands of years you know i mean and then he's like well why can't i keep him for my you know 100 that's i'm about 80 years yeah. 50 years left yeah you know i can't See him, see my boy. They're having this whole combo just by this pointing. Point, and, yeah. <laughs> just... I can't, I can't see my, I can't see my boy. Yeah. <laughs> They're yelping at each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just starts. <laughs> oh, man. You already know. I mean, you already know. She's like. All of it was just, you know, immediately afterwards, he, he, she's just like, I'm late. I'm raising the kid up there. This is all in one second. Like, usually it's like months after. And she's like, they get done. I'm late. Raising him upstairs. I'll tell my father. Upstairs. And you're like, what? Why can we do it down here? It just, it just happened. And you already know, he just died. Yeah. He's dead. <laughs> I love, you know, all these movies, they have some super smart scientist that has to figure out a way to communicate with the aliens because yeah. no one knows their language. This one's just yelping and it's making sense. Yeah. Like, they call in the Bargatze family. Yeah. We can't figure out. <laughs> yeah. And y'all just crack we it. We just get it. Uh, start laughing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, nah, I'm not going to say what he's saying. But he's there that's funny to be like that guy just cheated on his wife. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but it's pretty good coverage right there to go. Just make something up like that. Yeah. If you can believe, like, if he believes it that much, she just pointed up. Like, what she looked like? She had white hair. Yeah. Well, I found a red hair on your shirt. Oh, she had red. Her know, armpit hair was yeah. red. <laughs> they don't shave like you loser women down here do. Hair doesn't matter to us. He starts saying us. Hair doesn't matter to us. In the, in other places, she's like us. Us now. Yeah, yeah. You're one of them now. I am one of them. My blood is in their blood. Yeah, my boy is going to be. My boy is up there. My boy's up there. Yeah, look at these dumb idiots down here. He's pointing at his own children. <laughs> look at these idiots that have been raised out here. These kids are down here. These kids are down here. My kid. My kids. He, talk, he talks to her only. Not even his wife. He you starts, don't talk about my boy. Yeah. He goes... <laughs> It's my heart. My heart is my boy up there. And I'm going to go see him every... That's how the touchdown celebration starts. Right, that's he goes, it, yeah. my boy. And he goes, oh, is that God? You're like, no, I, my son lives with an alien. His alien mom went up there. And he didn't have to break it down. Just regular. Oh, you're talking about praying to God or something? He goes, nah, my, my baby mom is an alien. And she... She he lives up he lives up in there wherever that is wherever up is but like the clouds a little bit farther than the clouds don't be ridiculous keep going yeah keep going I see him on the clouds on the weekends uh, you know that's very very funny just uh, to, man <laughs> this guy's a genius right do you guys have you seen the movie Fire in the Sky no it's uh, have you seen it. I don't know. I feel no. I don't think so. It Probably, came out in the early nineties. Saw it though. Uh, Travis Walton. This guy is one of the most popular cases. He uh, was abducted for five days. <laughs> mm -hmm. Couldn't find for five days, and then he showed up and said he was abducted. He was a logger, and they came down and took him and did all these probing of him and stuff like that. But National Choir was also having a contest for the best UFO story of that year, and he won five thousand mm. dollars. He and his buddy. So. And he went on a game show like 30 years later and did a polygraph test. I forgot what the show was called. It was one of those, Truth or Not Truth. Yeah. And he failed. Oh, well, that's not good. So, yeah. but he was one of the most famous UFO cases. And like a movie Truth or a Lie? Or something? something like that. Yeah. Is it ever called Truth or Not Truth? Is that the name of a show? <laughs> I don't know. Truth or Not Truth? <laughs> What's the show called? Lyra. Truth or Not, or We're Not Telling the Truth? Lie or like, God, that's, a, that's a clunky yeah. name, huh, for a TV show? Yeah. Okay. So you get abducted. Yeah. One of you get abducted. You come back. I mean, what's your what? What do you? How do, do you tell people? How do you tell people? Because I always think, no matter what, these people they always come across as crazy a little bit. But I like to think there's a way to 
tell people without seeming like a like an insane person? Like what what what's your what's your first step? Who do you tell first? You tell your wife first, I'm guessing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, unless you're like that guy and you're, you're like, I don't know how to tell you this, but I've I had a relationship. I have. There's someone else. Yeah. And then your wife's like, is she here? You're like, no, she's she's up there. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I think you have to tell your your family and some friends. You yeah. Do you, how do you go public with it? This podcast. Yeah. You just come on the Hey, main. if you if you've been abducted, email Nate Land at neighborgets.com. <laughs> we'll let you go public. <laughs> we'll take you public. Yeah. Uh yeah, I think you have to go. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you It's not easy. I think like people maybe go a little too hard on these people because it's not an easy thing to to reveal that to the world. It's not as hard as you probably think, but it's no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, I know that's very <laughs> That Netflix show we all watch. Yeah. I mean, the Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. I think those right now is a lot easier than the other. Like, yeah. you know, right now, if you're like, oh, I came, I, I was abducted. I told about it in 2020. The guy in 1970 was like, come on, give me a break. Yeah. Like, you know, they, I got shot at when I <laughs> said it. Like, people might ruin my whole life. Yeah. 2020, I mean, you, I mean, you probably have your own show. Uh huh. <laughs> That's fair. But it's, yeah, it would, yeah, I don't, I, but I don't, you know. I don't know if you even would believe it sometimes in your own head. Mm -hmm. You could think your mind is pretty crazy. That's what they talk about, your mind playing tricks. And, like, you know, the idea of mm -hmm. your mind can do, make up just yeah. anything, dude. Mm -hmm. anything. I think that about these uh, people who are in comas and they say they died and went to heaven. Mm -hmm. and they write these books. I don't want to discredit them, but I sometimes I do think years okay. and years and years later, they start thinking, maybe did I just yeah. hallucinate yeah. all that? So you're discrediting them. <laughs> it's crossed my mind. That's always, yeah. Yeah. I don't discredit them, but I mean, they're. I don't believe that they do. That's what Brian uh, Regan goes. I don't want to step on anybody's beliefs, but here we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Voyager space probes are the first two uh, man-made objects that we've sent out of our solar system. They're in interstellar space, and they'll travel if in, uninterrupted for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And on there, we put some stuff. So when aliens find it they will know what we're all about. Um, they sent sounds of earth, including the sounds of whales, a baby crying, waves breaking on a shore, and music, including Mozart, Chuck Berry, and someone I can't pronounce here. Um, and Who? Do we even know the last one? Uh, I think it's like a, it's a classical composer, right? Valia Balkanska. What's Mozart? He's not classical... He is. Well, we know how to say Mozart, right? Also, I know, but so the third one is a classical? Well, there might have been more. That's just one. There's, there's, there's a lot of music on here. So oh. we got oh, okay. some Bach. We got some Mozart. A lot of Mozart. Oh. And then Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry, like you said. Yeah. Pretty crazy. 55 uh, greetings from 55 different languages. Hey, you not you don't throw Britney Spears on there too, like or something, you know? <laughs> well, this one no, out. I mean, this one out in the 70s. Yeah. Right? Oh. So maybe, maybe not, puts a I don't know some share or somebody yeah. like that. You don't yeah. throw share. You don't throw like we also do some other stuff. We're also fun. You don't do that. <laughs> you just give them like classical. You go. By the way, we have a pretty good time. <laughs> like I know you're gonna hear this music of just this classical music. <laughs> what is that one image? Here's what you're hearing. Right here? Oh, that's a foot. Okay. Cla yeah. You're gonna hear classical music. Waves crashing. Babies crying. Uh, and we know we're actually a decent time, though. How about that? How about you throw some celebrating? We got so, here's some of the pictures so, th that they included. There's some fun pictures. We got some pictures from the Olympics. Got a teacher teaching a kid something. Fish market, little x ray. I mean, we got some fun stuff. Oh, we can do x ray, and they're like, these idiots have bones. <laughs> <laughs> How stupid is oh, that? Yeah. yeah. He's, they still have yeah. bones. They still have bones with a bunch of oh, and they, oh, you can see the bones. That's oh, we got neat. pictures of our cars. Like that's going to impress them. Oh like, look wow, at those. what is that? Traffic? You're like y'all get stuck in traffic. What are you doing? And like, well, we all had to go somewhere. And what year is it down there? <laughs> that's uh, the same year it is air, here. I yeah, guess. yeah. The uh, airplanes. They're going to get what we're all about. I just think it's very cool that 
you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years from yeah. now. It's re- it, it is cool to think about somebody finding this and then just trying to piece together the story of us. Yeah. Yeah. I would think if someone finds it in a thousand years, they've, they've, they figure us out pretty quick. Yeah. I mean, how, I mean, we're talking about this on airwaves that are going to just everybody's cars and the, they're watching on TVs at home. Like, you know how far advanced we are in a thousand years. If those doofuses can't trace back <laughs> technology, where then where are they at? Do you hear, do well, you, maybe we crash into their planet and they're dumber than us. Oh, oh, like our like we planet our planet hits Earth hits their planet. No, the space probe hits their planet. Oh, but then it's just a bunch of you know dumb yelping and yeah. I want to play this sound, this sound that's on the Voyager. So an alien finds this. This is what they're going to hear. All right. Is that a cat? It's that's a, a guy's baby. It's a baby crying and a mother consoling him. I mean, you're you're not going to know what that is. Well, that yeah. one alien is that took that guy's baby up there. Yeah. Oof, that's fair. Sorry. Yeah, and the volcanoes, earthquake, thunder, wild yeah. dog, chimpanzee, uh, chimpanzee, mud pots. That'll <laughs> yeah. really make it us look pot. good. I don't even know what a mud pot is. It's a, you know, that's a pot made of mud. Oh. I'm guessing. I don't know I'm just sound thinking it makes. Of pottery, like ghost. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're giving them something to go. That's what's going on down there. No, oh, these idiots. Uh, they're gonna dissect the like the you know what we sent it on. Yeah. <laughs> what is it all on? It's just in a. It's on our. It's Voyager One and Voyager Two. There's two different spacecraft that that mm. just been set out for. 30, 40 years now, and it just keeps yeah. going further and further out of space, out of space. And they think it'll finally we'll lose all connection with it by 2025. And but it'll still just so keep we, going. We know where it's at right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 It's still functioning. Yeah. It's, it's kind it's of a amazing. golden record. And it's just like a wreck of vinyl uh, that just plays. How will yeah. they play it? My I think I remember reading, I don't see it here, but it's just they set it to where if somebody opens it up, it'll just start playing. Oh. Yeah. So they won't have to know how a vinyl works. I don't even think I could get a record to play. Yeah. I don't know how it works. We do think yeah. everybody in space would be smarter than us. That is pretty crazy. To, like, you just automatically go, well, they got to be smarter than us. Yeah. And if there's a chance, what if we are the smartest ones and it's Oof. just animals? So it basically be just like animals out there. So you go out and like a dog. Mm-hmm. You, a dog pulls up on a spaceship and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> and then just, you know, and he's like. <laughs> he's like looking at the window and you're like he doesn't open the door <laughs> you're trying to get like a yeah unlock the door he can't unlock the door from the inside <laughs> unlock it from the inside he goes he's not getting it dude. like he goes press the he goes just try to get him to the just trying to get him to walk on the button that opens it and then you just and then you have to run back and forth going hey and just trying to get him to run on the window still <laughs> You know, and he's just in like a high powered. <laughs> somehow that ship got made, but he's he didn't make it. Yeah, we That's, used to send monkeys into space. Yeah, it's true. You know, maybe they just put. Are dog. they still up there? Yeah, they're on Mars. Monkeys are. Yeah. Why didn't they put one in the Voyage? It's only been thirty <clears throat> years. Put a bunch of bananas on there and say, "There you go." <laughs> just have fun. <laughs> have at it. Just send the monkey out to. All that stuff would be just tore up. Dude. So then it's just, there's just a dead monkey in the Voyager. So when an alien finds it, they're like, this is who they were, I guess. I think, this- the Vo- I think the monkey's still alive and just kind of, you know. It's a lot of bananas. Living his own world now. He just has, he make believe scenarios. Yeah. Well, hello. <laughs> He's just talking to, did you have a good day today? How was your day today? <laughs> My day was fine. He's just making up. Mm. Yeah, that's where things happen. So some people think aliens helped build the Great Pyramids in Egypt. Have you guys heard this? Yes. They are so precise that even by today's building standards, we would have a really hard time reconstructing these. A triangle? (laughs) 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 Even in today's time. <laughs> we have we have the World Trade. Have you seen what they're doing in Dubai? 
it's, uh, these buildings that are thousands of floors that are like the footprint of my house and they go up just thou and they don't tip over. Yeah, we have a deep, we have a, we have a rough time with a pyramid though. Come on. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> That is that's oh someone trying to overly brag <laughs> that that doesn't you know that's like trying to be you know guy it's a guy that works at the pyramids yeah <laughs> he does tours he goes you know they couldn't even do this today and you get out dude everybody yeah I can drive my hotel looks better than this <laughs> it was m- millions of precisely hewn stones weighing at least two tons each but. The, the exact geographic coordinates for the Great Pyramid itself is 29.9792458. The speed of light is 2997924584. Exactly uh, the same? Yep. Yeah, uh, that sounds like a textbook coincidence, in my, <laughs> yeah. in my opinion. That's a lot of numbers to be exact. That's yeah. a lot of numbers to be exact. And our main thing is there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not you're not at a... 7-Eleven going, you can believe this 7-Eleven, right? When <laughs> you're at the main You think thing. this is our main thing as a pyramid? A triangle? I mean, thing? Apparently these lunatics think we can't ever do it again. <laughs> so yeah, right now, these triangles are the best we got. Yeah. I think these triangles are, you know. The seventh wonder of the world, isn't it? The theory goes the aliens from the future traveled back in time and built the pyramid at 29.9792458 on purpose as a clue, perhaps. Let us know. To let us know that, hey, we can build stuff and we build stuff quick. <laughs> Aliens are basically trying to get contracting work and they go, you want something done? You want it done quick? Yeah. Well. Looky there. We built look at, triangles. We, we built triangles. <laughs> three of them. How many are there? Yeah. Three? Uh, those are three main ones. There's a, there's more. Those are the three great ones. <laughs> I mean, can you do a rectangle? Listen, I don't want to brag, but I've done triangles. <laughs> yeah. So we've kind of figured right, it yeah. out. Yeah, if it was like three circles sitting in it, like, you know, just rolling around Egypt, I'd be like, okay, well, that is crazy. <laughs> Have you been to Stonehenge? In- uh, Yeah, a couple times. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. He's traveled a lot of places. Yeah. I feel like we talked about that. Uh, Stonehenge. Have I been to St- No, I've never People think that's aliens, been, but, too, right? They used that's to. A, no wonder what. I do want to go see this stuff. Where is Stonehenge? It's in England. Never. Never been. Um, Never been to England. Been it's to again, Ireland. it's stones that are so many tons and they're not even from around there. So how they got them there, people have always wondered how these stones got to this place. Yeah. So nothing could move. Oh, they're being like, how could they get moved there? Yeah. Yeah. I think they've kind of, I think they figured it out now, but. How? We couldn't even do that now, man. <laughs> couldn't even lift them now. How did they figure it out? I think, I, I, I mean, I didn't look this up, but I think I saw on something recently that, uh, they found a place not too far from there. I don't know. Yeah. That, that they think they somehow will. I mean, if you have wheels, you can bring a lot of stuff. Oh, like a wheel. Like a wheel. Yeah. I say that weird. I say it too. Weird. How, how close do they let like you a tire. get to that? If you go and visit, they probably don't let you get anywhere near it, right? Uh, I don't no. think so. I, think I mean, you, you can't can. like run through it and run around it, obviously. No. But You know, when I went to, uh, I was when I went to Iraq and we went to, uh, Abraham, Prophet Abraham, the house he lived at. Yeah. And a guy would take us there and they were trying to get uh the Pope to come bless it because it was where it was before Abraham went marching through Egypt and it was uh where he lived. And it's the floors are the same floors he walked on, and they've kind of re had to re, the guy had to redo the stuff. But no one's been there. So we walked on the floors, we walked, and I mean I told the guy, I go, dude, if this was anywhere else, like you wouldn't be allowed to get within a hundred feet of this. Yeah. yeah. And it, you know, it's like such a historical thing And this, but this guy, like no one, it's out in the middle. There's just so much stuff that's so historical. And just right is, there. It's right there because you're just out in the middle of nowhere and you're like, no one's coming out there. Yeah. You know? Uh, is that it? Yeah. Right there. Abram and Islam. Oh, right that, here. It looked like that. that yeah. like. Abram's, Abram's house. Exactly that. Yep. I've been yeah. there. Hmm. Uh, yeah. So, if uh, yeah, because that that thing is right next to it. what is it? Abram is on. You walk up those steps. Oh, these or, right like, here. That was like built. Yeah. Yeah. If aliens came down here, though, uh-huh. right here, and want to communicate with us, want to come on the podcast. Yeah, but wanted to have a 
we had, had to have one spokesperson. Who yeah. among us is going to be the one communicating with this alien? I think I am. <laughs> okay. For what reason? You're not even going to let us. Can we be in the room? Or I don't you... want to hear the questions he's going to waste on this alien. <laughs> like, huh? But he's going to be asking us questions too, or she. Uh, I'm equal oh, opportunity. Already, already, you're already out. <laughs> you're already, you're, you know, you're gonna be kneeling down before it. Aaron's the the brains, though. I, well, I used to think so, and I know he went to Notre Dame. But I think he get too caught up in that. I don't think he's too caught up in what he said. He went to Notre Dame. Yeah, you. I, I. You know. I think I would. I think I. I'm, I'm the greatest average American. So I would need to, oh, okay. if he wants to meet the U.S. of A. Rather than meet all 320 million people, you just meet America. You. Just meet them here, America. I should have been sent up in that Voyager. They should have sent me up there. I should be sitting next to that. I should be sitting like Forrest Gump on the bench with the, all that stuff sitting next to me and just sitting in that spaceship waiting for someone to open it. And he goes, hi, nice to meet you. And I come out and, and he goes, are you America? I go, I am America. I'm proud of where I'm from. And I and I and I do the pledge of allegiance to his face, <laughs> and then he and he, and they go, "Is this your music?" I go, I would "Never listen to that dumb music. All the music that's on there." I've been in this pro for fifty years. Never wanted to listen to it. Huh? That's how bad it is. Yeah. <laughs> and then you play some on, you know. Then I play Britney Spears. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be millions of years before that thing is found. I mean, we're just, we have no idea. <laughs> I mean, it's well, the, technically it's found. We know exactly like, where it's at. <laughs> right. What I'm saying, until it like runs into somebody. It's going to be millions of years. <laughs> we, we don't know if it's going to run into somebody. We don't know. Uh, right. That means, it might there, never that means there's someone out there. But, well, right. Or run into an object. Right. Or to, 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 just to be far enough away to where somebody else could see it. It's going to be millions of years for us. It could be a big, I know. Imagine the millions of years and on the news <laughs> is another world that's going, we are about to get hit by some spaceship <laughs> that's going to ruin Earth. That's what's on the planet right now. They're crying. Families, the world, their world's going to end because we just shoved a spaceship <laughs> off in space and said, Go. Maybe someone will catch it one day. And then there's babies in another world in a million years going, no, because it's about to crash into their world. And we have a Mozart on there and a baby crying that you can't really understand. Just mud pots. And mud pots. What was on it that killed half the population on Earth? And it just gets out. And- their place is called Earth, too? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's how far away they are. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> Earth's a popular name for a place to be called Earth. Right. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes too much sense, so other places would be called. Yeah, Earth. that's true. It's true. Yeah. And then they go, "Oh, their place is called Earth too." Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. UFOs. <laughs> we did it. We did the UFOs. Yep. Was that it? That was it, right? There's probably way more. But oh yeah, way more. But it all runs together after a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you handle it. Just goes out, just blew, blends in, <laughs> life altering kind of things. He is out. I saw one, you saw one. <laughs> yeah, we, right. We all got one. We all have one in here. Don't we? Uh, all right, we're gonna do another aliens. Aliens is yeah, fun. Was fun. yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you guys for listening. As usual, uh, comments, all that stuff. You're doing all the right stuff. You guys are the best. So uh, we love you, and we will see you next week. Bye.